Hi. I was going through my component bins the other day and found this little component here. As the title of this video suggests, this is a piezo vibrating gyroscope. Now, modern gyroscopes and accelerometers are based on microelectromechanical systems, or MEMS, and with the entire chip packaging measuring only a few millimeters across. This gyroscope, in contrast, is much larger. So let's take a look at the measurement here. And uh, you can see that it measures about 15.5-ish uh, and uh, with a width of uh, 8 millimeters and a depth of, well, well it's hard to measure here, but it's approximately, uh, uh, it's a little bit over 4 millimeters, give or take. And uh, this one was made uh, right around the year 2000. And I doubt that this chip design was based on MEMS. So I thought in this video we should take a look at the gyroscope in action and hopefully we can do a teardown of it to see what is inside. But uh, before I open it up, let's uh, hook it up and uh, take a look at how it works. And here I hooked up a 3.3 volt power supply. And as you can see that uh, this device only has uh, three pins that uh, we're using, so it's extremely easy to hook it up because the entire gyroscope is analog and it only has one analog output. So that's why I'm having this uh, analog meter here, so hopefully it's easier to read. So now I turn down the power supply and as you can see when I hook up the uh, output, and it's uh, uh, stable so at around uh, 1.25, so it's right in the middle range. Now when I move the gyroscope. In fact, this one uh, is uh, in effect along the uh, axis that uh, along the board here. So if I rotate this, watch what happens on the uh, uh, multimeter here. So as you can see that we registered the rotation of these, uh, uh, the movement of the board. And that's how this analog gyroscope works. Now, of course, if uh, this gyroscope is to be put in a final circuitry, it does need a little bit more components, especially on the output side, we need to filter out the high frequency and low frequency components. So essentially we need a bandpath uh, filter at the output. And for this specific demonstration though, it doesn't, it's not necessary. And also you notice that we have a capacitor here. This also is not strictly necessary for our demo purpose. It's basically hooked on to the reference point output to the ground. And the reference voltage is about 1.35 volts. And this is used to stabilize that uh, uh, reference pin. And uh, anyway, so I do have a couple of these uh, lying around. So I'm going to uh, open one up and uh, take a look at what's inside. And now I'm hopeful that this can be opened up re relatively easily. As I do see a couple of uh, notches here, hopefully um, I can pry it open. And uh, let's take a look. And check this out. I managed to open it up. Actually, it's not that difficult. It has a uh, top. The top actually price right off the other side and uh, the bottom also um, it's uh, snapped on. So you can see the notches I mentioned earlier on the side. But uh, anyway, so from the bottom you can see that uh, it appears there is a uh, uh, IC inside, surface mounted IC, uh, 18 pins. Not sure exactly what it does. Uh, it does have some marking on it but um, I'm not able to see very easily. And I suppose that it's probably one of the custom chips that uh, you won't find any data sheet on. Now, on the right-hand side here, you do notice we have uh, three uh, tr resistors here, and I'm just gonna grab a, a pointer here so you can see that we have one, two, three. And if you notice on the resistor here, we have some appear to be notches that are uh, on the, the surface. So presumably those are laser trimmed uh, resistors, carbon film resistors to make sure that the values are exactly uh, what they are expecting to the design here. And on the left side here we can see we have uh, three capacitors. Now let's uh, move on to the interesting parts. So if I flip this over, and by the way this is the bottom side, if I flip this over, 
and we're gonna see what is the top. Let me uh, make sure that is in focus here. So, uh, and uh, as we expected uh, earlier, this is really uh, not a MEMS type of uh, gyroscope, but instead it utilizes these two strips, which are the uh, vibrating structure for the gyroscope. So here, uh, those two strips that you can see in the middle of the image here is the vibrating structure that, uh, uh, according to the datasheet, is a uh, ceramic uh, bimorph vibrating unit that is used as the sensing element. And uh, the principle behind this is uh, really using the Coriolis uh, force uh, that results if an angular velocity is applied to this uh, vibrating uh, structure here. And uh, there are quite a few videos on the internet showing you the operating principle of this type of uh, gyroscope, but I believe this is actually the, one of the first one that actually showing you a real uh, working gyroscope inside, and I'm pretty excited about it. And uh, of course I'm going to post a few of the high-res pictures on my website, and uh, as usual you can go and check out the pictures yourself if you are interested. But I think what I'm going to do next is, uh, I can see these pads here, these are not that uh, small, so I can actually probe it while this unit is powered on. And we can take a look at some of the uh, other interesting features of this gyroscope. And of course to we can also determine the operating frequency of this uh, vibrating uh, structure here. So now I just hooked up this uh, gyroscope to a 3.3 volt uh, power supply. And before we do any measurement, let me actually briefly show you the data sheet here. And uh, this is the, um, the ENC-03J type. And uh, so as you can see from the data sheet that this one was uh, from May 6, 1999. So it has been around for quite some time. And, but if you look at the uh, data sheet here, and you will see that uh, this specific type of uh, sensors, usually uh, because it's only operating for one channel, if you have multiple channels, like the ones we have here, that uh, uh, each one would operate in under slightly different frequencies to reduce interference from each other. So this is clearly specified inside the data sheet here. And besides the operating frequency, all this, uh, uh, specifications are pretty much identical between the A and B version. So as you can see here, the A version is operating at uh, 22 kilohertz, whereas the B version is operating at 24 kilohertz. And the reason for that is because uh, these are using the uh, vibratory type of uh, structure as a sensing element, as we saw or earlier. And uh, by separating the frequencies apart, we can reduce the mutual interference with sound waves. So that's clearly specified here in the uh, data sheet here. Anyway, so now let's uh, take a look at uh, this um, sensor here and hopefully we can do some measurement. So now I powered up the power supply and you can see in the back here that is uh, set to 3.3 volts and also I have the oscilloscope on so that we can take some measurements. So for the oscilloscope, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, tip to probe uh, one of these four pads. So hopefully we can pick up some signal and uh, see what the characteristic uh, is. So I would expect to see some waveforms here. So let me just, uh, uh, let's see if we can move this forward a little bit so we can put both the oscilloscope and uh, the probe here in picture. So if I probe here, yep, so we can see that uh, we have some waveform here. So let me pause uh, briefly. Actually, let me just see the other pads. So they all should be pretty much similar. And uh, I would imagine these would be phase uh, shifted for, uh, of some sort because now I'm only measuring one at a time. They all look pretty much identical here. So that's the operating frequency of uh, this uh, structure here. And uh, I'm going to attempt to measure the exact 
operating frequency here. So it's just give me one second. I'm going to set up the scope and it will be right back. And I had turn on the marker and as you can see here on the scope, it is uh, exactly 24 kilohertz, which is what the uh, data sheet specified. And uh, for the other one that I have, that is uh, the A version, would be a 22 kilohertz uh, operating frequency. So that's uh, pretty much what uh, we can see from this uh, uh, neat little gyroscope here. And uh, it's very intriguing and very interesting to see how this whole thing was put together. And if you liked the video, please uh, remember to subscribe and give it a big thumbs up. And also, I will have more interesting videos coming along the way. Thanks for watching. Catch up with you next time.